Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. For today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the backend settings as you can access them through the embedded web server or the EWS for the TP-Link EAP225. I'm using the TP-Link EAP225 AC1350. Yes, that is a bit of a, a lot of words to say. Um, and the video here, I'm going to just be running through the main settings after you've deployed this on your network. Now you can manage this AP through the Omada web controller and even through a phone app, which is pretty cool. But to get the most features from what I've seen, uh, you go into this, um, you go into the web portal through a browser and um, that's where the most settings can be configured. So when you get in, the first page you're going to encounter is going to be the status page. And here you're going to see the key details. Now, if you just set this up on your network, the first thing I would recommend checking is the firmware version. It's always a good practice to quickly look up the TP-Link website. In my opinion, TP-Link does a pretty good job at um, you know, making these downloads available and easy to search for. So I just uh, searched for EAP225, clicked onto firmware and found the latest firmware. And I'm not sure whether it was already running it or I updated it. In any event, it's working and I have it on now. So just quickly check what firmware do you have? 507 build, blah, blah, blah. And uh, check that against what is actually the latest available thing. You can see it's the latest thing here. Um, that's really all you will need to do here, but you will see the LAN port. Now the EAP225 has one single LAN port coming in. It's actually a uh, PoE port, so it's power over ethernet. So that port supplies both uh, power as well as internet, which is actually extremely cool. And uh, you can see here what speed the LAN port is. Uh, mine's showing up as only 100 mega uh, bits per second. So I'm not sure if that's because it's a slow cable or it's just uh, that's all the router can deliver, the router that it's attached to by LAN. So hopefully if you've got a better uh, system, this is not my home, this is somewhere I'm traveling, then you might get 1000 uh, gigabits per second. Um, in the wireless uh, page here, you're going to get the status of your wireless networks and you can also get the status of your clients that are currently uh, connected to it. So you will have a SSID list and radio settings and radio traffic. Now I've just done a reset on this uh, on the router um, so we're getting it kind of refreshed, but this is just kind of useful if you want to get some top level stats here on how much data is coming in. I'm using band steering, so my radio traffic is being distributed between the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, networks, and I'll cover that uh, in due course. But you can actually get radio traffic according to each, um, and just keep an eye and make sure, you know, stuff is looking like it's working okay, etc. Um, client list, you can also see a list of your clients. For privacy reasons, I'm not gonna go into the list of clients on my network, but that's where you would uh, you can find them. I'm gonna skip over some of the features I think are not gonna be so useful for your average home user because your average business sysadmin watching this video probably knows way more about this uh, product than I do. Specifically, I won't be covering QoS and WLAN because I have no idea. I've never had any use for either, for that matter, either Mac filtering. But here are some things you might want to change. I did a separate video about configuring band steering on this particular product. The, the quick and dirty of it is that you want to create two networks on both the 2.4 and five gigahertz channels. So you're gonna to have to enable those. They're not enabled out of the box. Give them names, create a WPA a password, and you're gonna to want to keep the exact same network. You're gonna have same SSID, same password, etc and set those both up, broadcast those both on the two channels, and then click into band steering, and then you click enable, and that will configure band steering. There are some settings you might want to nevertheless play around with here in the advanced settings of both uh, these. So I'll just show you quickly what they are. We have a wireless mode option. We have channel width option with options of 20. I'm on the 2.4 here. 20 over 40 megahertz, 20 only or 40 only. We can manually select the channel, which can be useful. Um, if you're dealing with stuff like conflicts. And we can also manually configure the transmission power between six and 24. Uh, so that is uh, something you might want to do. Now there's more, don't, don't think that's all there is. You actually have these little clicky icons here that you can click into. Uh, load balancing, uh, maximum associated clients with one particular AP. Again, if you're putting a bunch of these on a network. Airtime fairness is not enabled by default. 
and then you have more settings. Now this is where it gets really into the kind of weeds that goes beyond my pay grade. You have stuff like beacon interval, DTIM period, RTS threshold, fragmentation threshold. And I don't know what any of those things mean. So if you do, you're, uh, you're ahead of me here. One thing you might actually want to do is create a captive portal and the captive portals, they can be configured um, according to the SSID. So you can create um, different ones for different uh, SSIDs. And you know these work as captive portals. You're, when someone signs in, they're going to be directed to this. You can create a redirect URL. So after they log in, it can go to this page. And the customization is not wonderful. You can kind of put a bit of text here, put some terms of use here and a little accept. So you know, I'm sure everyone who's watched this video has accessed a captive portal on an airline or a train and they're all nicely you know, laid out with the airline's logo. You're not going to be able to do that through this little system. It's more low level, but it's better than nothing. And uh, you know, for maybe something like a coffee shop, this could be a perfectly uh, acceptable solution. Authentication type can be password or there's more advanced options, but, um, and you can do no, auth no authentication um, as well there. So um, there you go. Now, one thing I think might be useful is scheduler. Uh, you can associate it with an SSID or with, uh, with an AP. And what you can do here is uh, at specific times, you can turn, take down the radios or take up the radios. So you might wanna say, well, the Wi-Fi network goes down at 10 p.m., et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you're doing a band steering, don't forget that you're still broadcasting two networks on two bands, it just looks like one band. So uh, you would just duplicate the, uh, the rule there. I've covered band steering a few times already. I think it's the one thing that even your average home user may want to set up after uh, configuring their router. That's why I've paid attention to it. And as I said before, the instructions are uh, same SSID, password and password methods, broadcast them both and then enable this. I'm gonna skip over QoS. Uh, rogue app, rogue AP detection is one that probably is not gonna be useful to your average home user, but uh, you know it'll scan through the uh, connected clients to this AP, see if any of them are in turn broadcasting their own uh, SSIDs, in other words, acting as secondary APs, and then say, hey, this looks, this might be fishy. So this is a kind of thing in a business or an airport or a big network uh, as a cybersecurity function would be useful, but I can't imagine most folks in, a, in their, just putting this up in their home would have reason to do this. Um, in management, you've got some management functionalities. The one useful one I'm going to draw, draw people's attention to here is the LED option. I'm one of those weird people that finds LED lights distracting. Maybe it just means I'm neurotic or crazy or whatever. So whenever I see an option for taking off the LED, I always go for it. So it's by default, of course, enabled because most people aren't bothered by stuff. But if you, if, you, you know, if you have your AP in a bedroom or somewhere where that you know, green, big green light on this access point is gonna be a visual distraction, you might wanna turn it off. Here's another cool little one. I don't know why you would forget where your AP is uh, perhaps, I guess this would be useful if you have a bunch of them on the network and you're trying to say, well, let's just light up this AP so we know which one we're, we're supposed to be putting the cable into. So that's what this LED locate thing does. It will flash the AP for 10 minutes and then stop or until you click the button again. So that's kind of nice to know. Um, yeah, I would consider disabling this, although you won't get a visual indication that everything is up and running if you do. I'm not going to cover SSH, S, uh, NMP. I am gonna cover two things in this final part of the system menu. Those are backup restore. I'm a huge backup advocate and I try to backup literally everything. Uh, so if you've got your network up and running, you've configured it properly, you say, hey, just in case, A, you might wanna duplicate this onto another AP or B, uh, so that's one use case. Second use case would be you just want to backup in case it goes bad and you need to buy a new one. So just keep backups. It just literally generates a file, a tiny little configuration file, and you can uh, restore like this. Firmware update is also, ah, I already covered this in this video, it's recommended to go in and check that. So that's gonna wrap up my overview of the uh, embedded web server EWS menu for the TP-Link EAP225 um, Enterprise Access Point. I think it's a great, great product for its price point. It's made um, a decent access point at a price that home network users like me can afford. Uh, thank you guys for sticking through to the end of this video and more videos on uh, this subject of uh, networking and different subjects as well coming soon to this YouTube channel.